Oh, bitch from China. Welcome to the Wicked Game Run. Collector, welcome back to the YouTube channel. So in today's video, it's time for a new portable system from a friend from China, yes. But this is not our, let's say, typical cheap system. No, no, no. This is from my favorite brand. It's from the Pokitty. Yes, people, it's from my favorite band, and they released the X90 portable system. And as you can see, it comes in this very nice box, and they did it again. They're ripping off the Nintendo Switch, because they love ripping off stuff. Right, the box itself is not very special in general, just a basic box. I'm getting here the 60 gigabyte version, there are different versions, keep that in mind. Alright, let's take a close look what's inside. <coughs> All right, what we're going to get with this is, I think, for the people new to the channel, I'm just going to show you, but it's more like our typical stuff. Why can't I get that out? Right, the system itself. Plastic. And let's see, this is a game machine product warranty card. Warranty, yes. Go away. All right, we're getting the... Why do I get... Hey, I got two AV out. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this little card, don't know why it's for. We're having this USB mini. Still using this old connection. Sometimes that is really annoying. Sometimes using micro USB, something you're using type C. Crappy headphones. And here we have the Pow Kitty X18 Deluxe Toilet Paper Manual with a lot of mm, interesting information, basic functions, blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. All right, let's take a close look at the portable system. <coughs> All right, so it comes in this plastic sleeve. All right, so this is the system itself, people. So the first thing that I'm noticing when holding it, it feels quite heavy. It doesn't feel very cheap like all of these other systems in the past. All right, so let's do a little bit of an overview because there are quite some things that changed out. And yes, it's a big screen for the people love the seven inch green. It's going to be fun. At the left side, we're still finding this weird D-pad. Yes, four buttons. I don't know why they're not using a regular D-pad. It's pretty annoying. We're having these normal analog sticks. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but they are quite high. Not too high, but I think they're going to play very nice. And we're having two little buttons over here. And this is for the volume control. At the right side, we're finding four buttons, the A, B, X, and Y. Got a very nice touch. The same analog sticks, we have two analog sticks on this device, totally pointless, because all retro gaming, so we're not going to use these analog stick at all. Maybe, no, no, not with the PlayStation. All right, so here we have select and start or instant coin. You can map them in different functions. All right, we're finding two shoulder buttons over here. Very clickish, like most of these systems. Analog switch, the SD input or the SD card slot. We having the mini USB, I almost want to say micro, but it is a mini USB. Um, you can just 2.0. Jack out, or we can use an headphone. And this very tiny little hole over here, that is the reset button. So, not really convenient. Right at the back, we're finding this crappy camera. That nobody going to use, seriously, nobody, because it's so horrible. Fun fact that we're having two speaker holes, but there's only one speaker inside. I can already tell you it's very loud and it sounds really good. Such a big shame they didn't use two of them. 16, 16 gigabyte is also an indication of which version you have and some information about the product itself. All right, so I'm powering on the system. The first thing that I'm noticing and I was really a little bit disappointed about is you can see this boot up with the Tekken. But my thinking why I'm so in, very disappointed, it's very simple. They are using the software from seriously the first portable system I reviewed, let's say two years ago, the X6 if I'm saying it correctly. They're still using the freaking same software. All right, so I made it a little bit dark here in the room so you can see the 
screen itself and as you can see when moving it around you can already see that the view angle is not very good but it is very common with these cheap 7 inch portable devices so keep in mind there are some very good 7 inch displays out there in combined with awesome portable systems but they are from a different price range so here at the top we're finding some little thumbnails and sadly we cannot swap them out so this is what you're going to get so this is nothing behind it you're just stuck with this decal yeah all right pressing the games you can see we having some directories um as you can see there may raise some folders on this device so the support of the games goes from nes sometimes to playstation one but keep in mind playstation one is most of the time a little bit horrible okay we're having video music the camera itself still i'm going to show you as you can see it's just horrible i can't wait for the day they're going to leave it out we're having tools ebook recorder stopwatch calculator calendar so maybe you're interested in this browse no you cannot go to the internet i did notice some comments in the past now this is just for browsing inside the memory or the storage itself settings all right we have a display here you can adjust the brightness the same for the backlight you can turn off within 30 seconds by the way i'm going to change it yes make it one minute 30 seconds a little bit too short a little bit annoying date and language can be changed in this device oh and if you're getting this device and you have this problem the third you need to use because this is the english we have a tv out just basic composite out so this is not a very special let's go to the advance let's go information I just wanted to show you this. This is not the first firmware they are using, so I'm very happy about it. But the question still remains, will this have better emulation? All right, so we're going to play and we're going to check what are we going to get with the device and is it any better? Every time when you boot up a game, this is what you're going to get. Yes, they call this restart, but this is just start game. We still didn't change it. Return to the game, you can quick load, quick save with basically every game. We're having some basic settings. Um, there is something wrong and I need to point out with Mega Drive, it's basically unplayable because there is no key mapping for the C button. If I'm saying it correctly, yes. So there's something I need to point out, just keep it in mind. Screen size, you can change it if you want, but some of these games look very horrible. There's one thing I want to show you. And the previous models we had that we can go back with the button, but yes, people, the back button is now the left shoulder button. Maybe you can remap it somewhere, but that is what we call basically an epic fail. So we're having two shoulder buttons that we're going to need for some certain games, but you can't use them because one is now the back button. You can use a D-pad, but don't ask me how. The unlock stick itself is not bad at all.
really choppy really really choppy all right all right so you want to use the tv out how does it work pretty simple all right going to show you over here you go to the setting menu go all the way down yes as you can see we didn't we don't have an image go all the way to a tv out select PAL or NTSC, depends a little bit what region your television is. I'm going to choose PAL this time, let's see if it works. And as you can see, we have an image. A very choppy image. The emulation is not the best on the Mega Drive, so basically it will not get any better when you're using TV out. I think it's getting even worse when using TV out function. The emulation of the GBA is not bad at all, and you can see it over here. Even TV out, it looks pretty decent. And keep in mind, I'm using a very tiny monitor. If you're using a huge, let's say 32 or maybe 40 inch of screen, it will look freaking hideous. Simply because it's an only AV out signal. Alright, so this is what we're going to get with the PAL Kitty X19. It's quite disappointing, to be honest. Um, there is a new model, yes. What did they improve? The shell itself is way better and feels less cheap than the previous model. The D-pad is still horrible. The analog stick a little bit improved, but still, don't get me wrong, they still have, still have this very cheap feeling to it. The button is not bad, shoulder buttons, the epic fail with the back button that is now the left top button. So I'm thinking why did you remove the back button, the previous model was on the top over here. If it comes to the software, they didn't improve it, no people. So that is something that I'm so pissed off about, I'm thinking you have a new model, please bring out new software. So basically they redone the shell, but the software is still crappy. I don't know if it's possible to get open dingus on this device, so far I know there is no way of, let's say, upgrading the firmware. So this is what you're going to get. Let me know what do you think of this. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video. And if you like some gameplay, don't forget to check out the Wicked Gaming channel.